Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done my last review, which was Deadpool 2. A good movie, by the way. But, during that past week, um, I wasn't feeling very well. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to get better now. And thank goodness I am. Because, uh, during the finals, uh, I went to the doctor. I had to take a blood test, which didn't turn out very well. I started feeling woozy, dizzy, ready to pass out after taking those 14 samples of blood. It was horrible. I had to take some orange juice twice, plus um, plenty of water, hoping to feel better, so I get my blood pumping. And I did have to lift some weights for a while to see how this goes. It just wasn't easy. So for a while I just had to take a break. You know, I was watching some movies and taking some time. I just haven't done a video in a while anyway, so just not a way to start. <laughs> well it's gonna get worse now because I'm gonna do a review this week and this time it's a remake of a nineteen seventy four film that stars Charles Bronson which in turn was based on a novel by Brian Garfield in 1972 simply called Death Wish. This time around Paul Kersey is not the architect he's a surgeon and he's just working his time shifts you know during the morning, noon and night he's just hanging around with his family including his brother so one night that he discovered that his wife was killed and his daughter has been sent to a coma by a trio of thugs who put them there. So it was up to him to become a vigilante to stop him along with the rest of the other thugs around uh, the city of Chicago. Yeah. Quite honestly it has its moments, but the problem is Eli Roth is not the right choice to direct a movie like this. Have they got someone talented, definitely knows how to improve the story very well? I can understand. Especially with, with a screenwriter. But it just wasn't very well done. I mean, it's like they just keep bringing in you know social media into it and not to mention the bad timing when this movie got released it was released on March 2nd originally it was supposed to come out in November but due to the the recent tragedy of of the Las Vegas um, shooting that was going on and that was back in October they wanted this film to be pushed back to another month so hopefully this will die down a bit but unfortunately they decided to keep it on its theatrical date because but I guess they just didn't know that what MGM was doing that um, there was a there was a school shooting coming around which was at Parkland Florida wasn't the perfect timing right there also the fact that now MGM is releasing the film on its own, not being co-produced with another studio. Although uh, Anna Perenna Pictures uh, now signs a deal with MGM to become a distributor, so they now have the international rights. And that's what they have. So MGM now came back as a distributor to release this movie. Well. It did make its profit out of its 30 million budget. Yeah, 48.6 million to be exact, but not exactly as big as you think. I personally think it's unnecessary. They didn't really need to remake this movie at all. I thought the original film was just fine the way it is. Um, Willis is no Bronson, that's for sure. And that's my problem too because Willis um, 
over the years, you know, he's been sleepwalking through his roles. He hardly ever makes a good movie anymore like he used to. I mean, he did have a good film like Looper that came out uh, in recent years, but he's been mostly doing like some direct -to video films and all those other ones, some of which were forgettable. I mean, he hasn't had a good movie for a while, and that's, that's just sad. Uh, on the other hand, he was decent in the movie, I'll give you that, but I think it just could have been better. But anyway, the whole idea of the film was about, uh, vigilism. You know, like, if someone can't go after all these thugs out there in the streets, especially if one of them actually had killed someone, it's best to take the matters of their own hands by disguising yourself as a vigilante and, and killing them. So that's their death wish. <laughs> so anyway, let's get back to the review. It stars Bruce Willis, Vincent D'Onofrio, Dean Norris, Kimberly Elise, Mike Epps, Elizabeth Shue, Camila Mamane, Ronnie Jean Blevins, Bo Naps, Jack Kesey, yeah, also from Deadpool 2, Winnie Crewson, and Kirby Bliss uh, Lenton. It's written by Joe Kananahan, which of course is based on Death Wish, and it's directed by Eli Roth. Yes, Eli Roth, who's in Hostel along with the sequel, and he was even in the movie Inglorious Bastards, but he had directed some movies in his career, so there you go. The movie begins when we meet Paul Kersey, who's played by Bruce Willis, who works as a trauma surgeon at a Chicago hospital in Chicago. He lives with his wife Lucy, who's played by Elizabeth Shue, and his daughter, who's now attending for college, named Jordan, who's played by Camilla Morane. After having lunch at a restaurant, you know, with Paul's brother, Frank, who's played by Vincent D'Onofrio, you know, they just went out to celebrate after, you know, a soccer game. Paul gives the keys to a ballet named Miguel, who secretly takes a picture on his phone of their home address that's from a car navigation software and overhearing when are they going to be out one night so later on while Paul is just working shifts at the hospital three masked men dangerous thugs had evaded the Kersey's home which is a very beautiful home by the way while Jordan and Lucy have returned home Suddenly, they told them to, to try to grab uh, all the stuff that's been hidden somewhere in the safe. Yeah, one of them is just you know, fooling around with um, Jordan. But they told him to stop. So. And since that didn't work out, they both got shot. And then Paul suddenly learns that that his wife Lucy had died while Jordan fell into a coma. Yeah. So police detective Kevin Rains, who's played by Dean Norris, along with uh, his partner Leone Jackson, who's played by Kimberly Elise, they're, they're about to investigate uh, the case involving those three thugs who killed um, his wife and, and sent Jordan to a coma. But Paul suddenly became very frustrated that with the lack of progress that's going around with the investigation that one night 
he came across two folks harassing a woman. He intervenes and suddenly gets beaten up. So he spends most of the time at home, you know, watching TV, you know, just taking some some sleeping pills. He also went to a psychiatrist who's played by you know, Wendy Cruz and just trying to talk about his problems that he's having. You know, he's so because he just couldn't take it anymore, he decided to become a vigilante, known simply as the Grim Reaper. Well, they dubbed them as the Grim Reaper, um, coming from from morning talk radio, the news, and social media that's going on. So, his first kill was to go after um, a carjacker. He, he actually saved the life um, of the driver, who was a woman. But unfortunately, that video was on viral because some girl actually uh, recorded the video on her phone and just sent it to YouTube, but also sent it as evidence too uh, for the detectives. But then when he found out that Miguel was being hospitalized, because this was the ballet driver, he begins to discover the cell phone that he took that's when he found the address and then he begins to find the text where he goes around at a local liquor store and you know, trying to find trying to find out who the other thugs were yeah, he found two of them and he begins to find where his stuff was that was stolen so all of his stuff was inside um, a safe and other boxes, so he got everything. He even found uh, his his wife's uh, ring. So what he did was um, he begins to take care of those guys by shooting them. He tries to avoid um, not being seen on on surveillance cameras yeah. at the bar. Yeah, he already took out one, but he also took out the other all the way. Also earlier in the film, he uh, he took out uh, a drug dealer named simply the Ice Cream Man because he actually hurt a, a little boy. Actually gave him a bruise on his leg. <laughs> so so now they don't have to worry about him anymore. So after that. Uh, continues to go on trying to find the other killer I'm trying to go after all these other um, thugs in the streets you know before um, his daughter um, was being awakened from a coma and then it leads to other trouble because now his brother uh, Frank had now found out about it since the detectives had came to his door and found out um, what was going on and what led to all this. I'm gonna stop right there. Um, I guess I could say that for the most part, I think Willis did okay for his parts. I mean, you could definitely feel sorry for him because of the fact that he lost his wife and and his daughter had to be sent to a coma that he wants to get his revenge, but the problem is though I just don't see him as like the kind of role that I could take I mean, it's too bad though because I think he, he would have been good enough for it but then I thought um, his brother Frank, who's played by Vincent D'Onofrio, was kind of a necessary um, definitely a Frankless role also, Elizabeth Shue, who played Lucy, wasn't in the movie much, so, of course. But it was sad that this happened to her. Um, the daughter, Jordan, played by Camilla Rwane, she's okay. Basically what I expected. But you definitely feel sorry for her because of what happened. You know, how she's been beaten, she got shot. 
I mean, but in the end, um, I'm glad Kirstie saved her life. Because I know there was going to be plenty of voters that were following in. Um, the two detectives, um, yeah, Kevin Raines and Nord Jackson, um, <laughs> I guess yeah, you know, they were yeah you know, they were there for the for the comedy and the bickering and all that. Even though they're trying to find out the investigation that's going around, you know, like they they always. Uh, <laughs> they always come in with their own uh, set of jokes and all that. But they were good. Uh, Mike Epps has a uh, a small role in the film as uh, Dr. Chris uh, Sagabdo. Yeah. Paul was a close friend of Paul Kersey, so yeah. And Wendy Crewson playing the the psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Jill Cabins. Yeah. Hardly see her in more in movies, but it's a good thing. Uh, what's really distracting for this movie was they had to throw in all these morning talk shows, and they, they had all the hosts talking about what was going on you know, with the crimes in, in Chicago that's happening. And, and then... <clears throat> You know, as usual, you know, people bringing cell phones, taking pictures, recording video, trying to go, trying to become a social media sensation for the internet, you know, so on and so forth, post, people posting on YouTube or whatever, yeah, that sort of thing. And it was just a shot of, of him just holding a gun, like sideways. While wearing the hoodie, and yes, he was like wearing different types of hoodies, so that way you know he, he would disguise himself so he won't be shown. <sighs> I mean, going back to the original film, I mean, especially the the sequels too. Uh, Paul Kersey usually wears in the later films. He usually wears like a beanie. You know, in the skies, and he can't, he actually has his own guns to to stop those thugs. But I know in the first movie, um, it was just him, just wearing a coat, you know, looking casual. But he has a gun, mostly because uh, his friend um, actually gave him the gun. He tried out. He just went after all these thugs. They're going after him. That sort of thing. Uh, uh, so I, I guess in a way, it's sort of a time waster, but I wouldn't recommend it. So I'll, I'll just stick to the original Death Wish uh, along with its sequels, except for the the fifth movie because because that was horrible <laughs> incredibly laughable if you ask me for, for that one but I guess I could say that at least this movie was better than the fifth one and when it comes to that but but in a way um, I guess I'll take it for what it is um, not too bad, but it's just not that good. Um, and the violence in the movie, um, basically straight up. I mean, there's even a scene where where he went to um, the mechanic where he actually stopped that one guy who was just fixing the the car, and he actually and Paul just grabs a scalpel, you know, slices his leg and put some brake liquid inside and then he takes the chain and just yanks it and the, the car just falls all the way down into his body and it actually crushes his head it's like some blood and gore right there that was very brutal couldn't believe it 
And even at the end of the movie, um, you did have a machine gun actually shot down the one thug and he fell all the way down the stairs and he bumps his head and he has like a gaping hole on his head. Yeah, blood started to come right out too. Yeah. Yeah, going for the gore right there. That's your typical Eli Roth. Uh, even amazing, he even does the, the finger gun pose. Just like in the original movie that uh, Charles Bronson did. You also saw that in the trailer too, so there's no doubt about it. I can't recommend the film, but I guess in a way, I, I probably would just watch it as a time waster, but but I'll just stick to the original film, along with the, the free sequels, except for the, the fifth one, because that one sucked. <laughs> That's for sure. So anyway, I give Def Wish, the remake, two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.